we say hello to our... Hello everybody and welcome to our third session of Small But Mighty Bible Study. The smaller books of the Old and New Testament and uh, some of the books that we often overlook and don't realize how much is, is in there about uh, God and his people and how it applies to us in today's world. So welcome to everybody, especially those of you who are viewing uh, our class tonight. And uh, we welcome you and let us begin then with a word of prayer. Almighty God, your word always bears fruit in our hearts and in our lives. Uh, let us be open to the seeds that you plant tonight that you may offer us growth in our spirit that we may draw closer to you in love and faith, all for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 All right, so everybody, come on, let's go next door. We're going we are going to be watching a <laughs> video. <laughs> it's like having a What's substitute that? teacher. No, you don't take <laughs> <laughs> we are on a field trip. Um, and for those of you who are watching, we're going to give you the URL for the video that we'll be watching off of the YouTube. So, come on. And You're better than I am, so. It's a pretty dress. I love pink. Thank you. See? Yeah. <laughs> Say you not today. Yeah. Not today. Right? It's okay. Yeah. That's in my seat. Some duct tape with that one. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Here's a feel of, you know. Um, how you couldn't breathe. We need to be happy we don't have Lucas here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but if we did, they would come our way. This recent brood that came out, my sister experienced some of that. Mm. Oh, really? Where? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she lives in Ohio. I didn't so know So she'd be out it. walking the... Did, did everybody hear about the brood that just emerged this? No. no. I the did, cicadas? but since we didn't have it here, I didn't. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it was all <coughs> over my... I mean, it was all over yeah. my Facebook feed. I mean, every day there were articles I mean, how to eat them, how to... Is sweep off your patio, how um, not to um, sit under the tree for protection because, well, frankly, they're so big that you feel their pee is how it was, that's how it was oh, wow. written. Oh, yeah. my god! Yeah, because they're so big. So they said be careful that you had umbrellas up wherever you were if you wanted to be outside and how to clean up and to check your gutters. Wow. So I was following it the whole season wow. because of the... Just I the numbers that. of them. Right. You know? yeah. we, we were in one of the previous... Um, um, emergences of cicadas. Okay. Um, we had a yeah. trailer down in Maryland, and they came out there. But I was younger than ten, so I don't really remember it all that clearly, mm -hmm. except except the sensation of walking and stepping That's on their on their shells. Mm -hmm. So right now, ours wow. are out. So I've seen about five of the if you've seen of the carcasses that are out hanging yep. on the side of a tree or something. Wow. But wow. I was just saying, my sister experienced this emergence because oh it was gosh. supposed to be in the the what the tens of thousands, if not. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their numbers were. But yeah, she'd be walking, and one would like fly in front of her, and it was nothing like the mm -hmm. video. But they were, they were well, plentiful enough, mm -hmm. yeah, that she could not avoid them when she was out walking yeah. the dog. Yeah. Yeah. They're in common with the cicadas because they say they're what 17 years underground, and that said they were 20 years yeah. underground, which yeah. is amazing. That like all the rain and everything else that they survive underground. I mean, yeah. yeah, how do they know? Another, another marvel. Right out of there. Wake up. Right. Yeah. God how calls them up. Yeah. Come on, I got a job yeah. for you. Somebody, oh, yeah. was, somebody was bad. Yeah, yeah. we're going to yeah. take care of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the earlier group was talking about the um, uh, the lantern flies now. Yes. Yeah. 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 Big yeah. Thing. yeah. And how they've seen them out and about. In fact, somebody was mentioning they were at uh, a Walmart and they mentioned a swarm of lantern flies out mm. there. Mm. So In the store? No, above the exterior. Oh. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, we're seeing little... Now we're close to what that video showed, but pretty right. good video of mm -hmm. uh, good. what it would look like. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I wanted to show you that because Joel Thank you. is, you know, on, on the heels of that event, mm -hmm. and he's going to deal with that as the prophet sent by God uh, to convey God's word. So <clears throat> let's look. I always like to give you a little bit of a setting or a background for Joel so that you can kind of understand the historical context. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, the it's sheets okay. are there if you don't yeah. have one. Does anyone else need one? I sure would like one, I thank you. you. What'd you think of that video, Mariana? Did you see all those bugs? <laughs> 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 
Thanks. Thank you. No, I'm good. Thank you. That's good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So Joel's name is pretty basic. Yahweh is God. Remember, anytime you see L in somebody's name, mm -hmm. like Gabrielle, mm -hmm. that means God. Oh, wow. Oh, now, Gibor is the Hebrew for warrior. I'm, I'm using that. I know I've looked up, like, her name means um, holy in Hebrew. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, or Greek, I think it's Hebrew or Greek. And then I knew my name is Messenger because of Gabriel. Okay. Right from that. And then um, a few other names. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that one. Yeah, yeah. 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 So L is always Joel, Ga Gabriel, or Gabrielle. Um, Noel. Well, Noel, maybe, mm, unfortunately, maybe not. that's no. not Hebrew. But if it's right. Hebrew. Oh, God, it's <laughs> Hebrew. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there's a bunch of them in there. But that's what his name means. Yahweh is God. Which is good because that's part of his message to reaffirm that God is God. That, you know, he's there in the midst of everything. Now, one of the interesting things when they hit certain books of the Bible to kind of figure out the historical context, you have to go by the clues in the book itself. So you kind of do piecemeal to figure out about Joel and where was he and what time frame was he. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how they do that because it's always interesting, at least it is to me, maybe not to everybody, but it is to me. Um, he probably lived around Jerusalem. Why do they say that? Because most of what he says is oriented toward Judah and Jerusalem, the temple and Mount Zion, which is in Jerusalem in the, in the surrounding area. So, obviously, he's got to be in that vicinity. As any good prophet, he identifies himself with the people of God. My God, your God, our God. You'll see that used in the book. Uh, so, that's good. That means he's in the midst. And he also identifies with their suffering. So, he calls it our suffering. So, he's right in the midst. It's not like somebody speaking from outside of the event or away from the people. Okay. And he's also knowledgeable about farming because he uses some of the agricultural terms that you would use. So he's, he's got at least some of that basic knowledge down. When it comes to the time frame, now this is going to be interesting, they figure it's around 400 BC when he was around. How do they figure that? Well, we know that the people of God are scattered at this point in time uh, when Joel's talking to them. We know that they were scattered, the people of Judah and Jerusalem, were scattered around 587 BC. So kind of put that on a timeline. 587 BC is over here, okay? As you head toward AD, you're going to come this way, all right? And the numbers are going to get smaller as you go towards zero, because zero is going to be birth of Christ, okay? So AD. So BC always goes down, AD always goes up. So 587 BC, we knew the kingdom of Judah, the southern kingdom of Israel, or the southern kingdom of the Israelites, fell. The capital, being Jerusalem, fell to, do you remember who invaded them at that year? Extra credit. <laughs> uh, we talked about it last time. Uh, they were like, uh, was it, was it, it wasn't Kuwait? It wasn't, it wasn't no, but country? back no, then, no? Okay. well, the northern kingdom fell to Assyria. Assyria, right. And then who was the great superpower of the Middle East that came after Assyria? The... Greeks? No, before the Greeks. Really? Because with the B. Oh, oh, Babylonians. Babylonians. Oh, Babylonians. Right. There we there go. go. The Babylonians. Right. So they came and attacked Jerusalem and then everything fell down. Yeah. The walls, right. the temple, mm -hmm. everything. So we know the way that Joel is talking about the scattering of the people, it has to be after 587 BC. Because before that they were united. At least as the southern kingdom and then before that as, a, as the entire kingdom. So we know it's after that. Can't be any earlier than that. He talks about the temple. So if the temple has been rebuilt, that happened in 515 BC. So now we're coming this way on the timeline. If the temple's been rebuilt, then it can't be any earlier than 515 BC because that's when it happened. Then if you look in chapter 2, verses 7 and 9, it talks about the wall, which would be the wall around the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem had a major wall all the way around it, a fortification. So it says, soldiers, they scale the wall, and then in 9, it says, they leap upon the city, they run upon the walls. So the walls were present. 
they had to be rebuilt because 587, they were all destroyed. When were they rebuilt? The time of Nehemiah. If you read the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament, he talks about rebuilding the wall of the city, Jerusalem. That was approximately 440 BC. So you're coming down the scale, right? It can't be probably not any earlier than that. Now, one more thing. He mentions in chapter 3, verse 4, he mentions a particular city which is of significance. It's when God is speaking to the cities of Tyre and Sidon. What are you to me, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the regions of Philistia? Sidon was known to have been destroyed in 343 BC. So if it has, if he's still up and running, it has to be before 343 BC. So now you've got your parameters. You've got, and by the way, here's Sidon, right here. Tyre and Sidon, just so you mm -hmm. get, they're on the Mediterranean coast. So you've got 587 over here, and you've got 343 BC down here. But you know you've got some dates in there that help you get closer. So they've got a big range here, but they figure 400 BC based on it's in between 440 and 343 BC. They give you that range just because they don't know. It's a, it's a guess, but it's an educated guess. So, so you see how they do that? They look for the clues. It's right, yeah. Yeah, and you have to know the other events that were of significance. And, you know, how do they find those things? How do you know of those things? How do you think they know? Is it probably writings, right? Writings, writings. they find writings. How about, like, archaeological digs yeah, and everything? Yeah, the digs. Okay. A lot of times in the digs they'll right. find things. Some of them, like the Dead Sea Scrolls that we had. Yes, yes. They really help to fill in right. some of the gaps. Yeah. When you mentioned the wall falling, remember Jericho's story of Jericho? Is there any yes. semblance or connection? That's much earlier. Okay. That's the time of, of Joshua. So right after Moses. Is That's there a timeline or a good, because um, I was actually mentioning it William. I like, you know how all there's different tribes and different families. Is there a uh, biblical, uh, almost similar to like an organizational chart where you can kind mm -hmm. of see who gets who? Because oh, when yeah. you read it, it's, <laughs> oh, cool. yeah. it's all like a... a Can your magnifying yeah. glass? Yeah. In the gospel, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there is in the beginning of one of the gospels, it shows oh, yeah. the ancestors from Abraham to Jesus. Yeah, I know, but it's all... It's all and in Matthew. Yeah. But that's, it would be nice to see. I'm a visual person. Wow. Like if if you, you are a kid. You go. Oh, wow. If oh, you ever... That's, that's I'll exactly what right it is. It's hard to see unless you really look. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll that's take a picture of it. that's a genealogy from Eve, Adam and uh, Eve, all the way down to exactly. Jesus. Okay. Wow. That's the family tree right there. Okay. That's wow. amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. But the timeline, um, we're working on getting Bibles for everybody in the church, mm -hmm. good study Bibles, okay. and sessions already proved it, mm -hmm. and that Bible will have good timelines, maps. It, I have some even in this Bible, but they actually show you a lot of the history like we know it, mm -hmm. like um, say one of the dynasties in China, mm -hmm. and then underneath that you may see Abraham and Sarah, and you know, and so you'll see how the Bible times okay. coincide. I've heard people speak of the flood being a good kind of marker of, of time and, hmm. you know, guessing where the mountain was that it became the rest on. And all, all the different shows that are on like the History Channel and all. Yeah? Yeah. One of the, I don't know if it's still out there or not because I don't get it anymore, but uh, Biblical Archaeology was a magazine I used to okay. subscribe to. Mm -hmm. And you find out some really amazing things oh, yeah. from that. Yeah. Um, so many times archaeology has proven what the Bible says when mm -hmm. people doubted it and said, yeah. ah, that couldn't be. Right. Yeah, the archaeology yeah. proved it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so... So very interesting, mm -hmm. but yeah, the the digs, the what they find, the writings. Uh, Have you ever been to um, like the Middle East area in Israel no. and? Uh, mm -mm. No, okay. I've flown that's over it. But okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's no. one. Of the, that's on my bucket list. To oh well, we'll have to talk about getting a trip. Yeah. Well, we'll <laughs> see. I don't know if anybody's going to be going anywhere pretty I soon. I know. But it's starting to get kind of chaotic in that area. Yeah, but anyway, so that's how they do it. So you can be like a little detective. Mm -hmm. um, there's a Bible course that I teach. Uh, I'll have to resurrect that if people are interested in how to study the Bible. Um, and 
that shows you some of these things, some of these tools. It's pretty fascinating. And what you do is you get to pick uh, a, a topic or however you want to choose. There's a, a variety of things to choose. And then you present for the class. Okay. So okay. we might try that someday. Yeah. All right, so let's look at the book of Joel. I'm going to do it a little differently than Jonah and Ruth. Uh, we didn't really delve into too much of the, the text when we did those. We kind of just hit the highlights. But I want to... It's so short, it's only got three chapters. I thought it'd be good to kind of do a, a quick skim of it. If you look at the book of Joel, you might have been able to see <coughs> um, a breakdown. There are certain breaks in the book that are clean. And the first clean break seems to be at verse 12 of chapter one. And then the next break seems to be clean at the 17th verse of chapter two and then all the way through the end would give you section three. And only because you hear the command and the information of the tragedy in that first section, and then how do the people respond to that? What is the prophet's message for the people in light of that tragedy? And then the third section would be, how does God respond to what happens to the people? So we're, that's what we're gonna look at, kind of an overview of the book. But again, if you have questions along the way, we'll just handle them as we go if you like. Um, but the first section starts off with a command. And what is that command in those first 12 verses? Did you notice what it tells the people to do? What the prophet is telling them to do? Tell your children. Tell your children. Pass it down. Yes, pass it down. And what are you supposed to tell your children here? About all the things that's happened. Yeah, and what is the big thing that's just happened? The swarm of locusts. The, the plague, swarm? Yeah. The plague of locusts, yeah. Even, did you notice that video? He even called it a plague. Mm -hmm. He said when swarms toge get together, then you have a plague. I was mm -hmm. kind of excited to hear him use that word there. Mm -hmm. So, my, yes. My, my um, I don't know if this is in every Bible. Palmer worm. Is that another name mm -hmm. for um, Palmer locusts? worm? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's what my, uh, you know, each Bible has some different ways of describing them. Mm -hmm. Um. Did you notice in, it's in verse 4, and you know, when you look at the translation, they're like question marks, because they don't, yeah. the words are probably used here only, so unless you really were studious with your locusts, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you don't know what they mean by them, right. but the, that's they how they break them out. And there's a lot of different names for the canker worm, and I don't, that's at least my Bible. That's says. funny. Does it say it in yours? The Mine canker? are all locusts. Oh, yeah. this says locust. Mine says canker, canker worm. Interesting. Caterpillar, and it's locust eaten, and that which the locust has left, the half the canker worm eaten, and then that which the canker worm have left, half the caterpillar. Interesting. So yeah. Maybe they kind of all work together or travel together. Well, maybe those are words for the different stages. stages. Yeah. Because That's mine good. say great locusts, yeah. young locusts. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So I wonder if it's before they fly yeah. and after right. flight. Right. Interesting. And well, did you notice one of the, I don't know what words you have. Mine has the swarming locust, the hopping locust, and the destroying locust in my version. Yeah. Yes. Which one did you? Which one of those three did you notice they mentioned on the BBC the video? The hopping. Mm -hmm. The hopping. Yes. Yeah. And what age were the hopping ones? Yeah. Well, the younger. They, were the, they were the young yeah. ones. Yeah. 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 And I just said they they reminded me of grasshoppers. And yeah. They said, yeah, hoppers, yeah. 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 The hoppers. Oh yeah. So very interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's the the story. You got to tell the kids about what happened with the locusts. And because as it says there in verse 2, has such a thing happened in your days or in the days of your ancestors? No, that's how significant this event is. Yeah. They've not seen it before. Not to this extent. Now, we've heard of plagues of locusts before, right? Yeah, back mm -hmm. in Moses' time. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the ten Pharaoh. plagues, right? Yeah. 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 And, and you know, excuse me for interrupting, but if they're that many just going through an African desert in biblical numbers, we know everything is just larger than we can imagine. Right. Yeah. Exponential. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then there were other ones. First Kings 8.37, Second Chronicles 6.28, and even in Amos, who's the next uh, prophet over, uh, chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. So locusts are not something new, but apparently when this happened in Joel's day, 
It was very, very significant. It was the worst they'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. So, um, you want to hear them? Oh. Hear what? The locusts. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really short, but my sister was, like I said, with the locusts. Oh. Oh, it's wow. that constant. Yeah. 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 You hear the birds, like. You can hear the birds too, yeah. but that yeah. humming is just a constant throughout the day. Yeah. Oh, I remember when we had a, a, a swarm of uh, the gypsy moths. Yeah, yeah, somebody mentioned them too. Yes. I mean, you could hear I that, that. Yes. the way they were chewing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. stuff and around your tree. I mean, that was really disgusting because I remember, well, Rebecca was about this big, mm -hmm. and every morning before she, I could leave yeah. her out, I had to go hose down everything. everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, to get the droppings oh, away my and gosh, then I tell her she could only walk about that certain years. places. Wow. But, I mean, you could actually hear them crunching oh. the leaves. Yeah. I know going down uh, uh, Grant Avenue, they get really loud there, and that was the first I've heard of the cicada maybe mm -hmm. four or five years ago. I mean, I don't know if there's still cicada, you know, but usually, uh, you know, uh, I guess a little earlier than now, uh, this part of the season, mm -hmm. and just, I mean, just so loud. Yeah, yeah they're very loud. Yeah. Very loud. Yeah. yeah. Um, so think about it. You have this massive swarm of locusts and they are eating the vegetation. Mm -hmm. So what are the ramifications of that? Cattle no starve. Food. Yeah, all the livestock starves. The livestock are going to die because mm -hmm. there's no grass, there's yeah. no food to eat. Could okay. have uh, uh, water issues if it rains where some of that stuff may hold, hold it back or absorb it. I mean, I don't know. You could, good, yeah. yeah. Well, grains, you can't um, yeah. make bread, which is Right. So. Yeah. You won't be able to store up food for yeah. the winter as they count on to get you to the next season. So it's so not just an immediate issue, but yeah. there's going to be ramifications oh, that yeah. way. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What else? Oh, just shelter it. If they, if it's a lot of their, um, mm. like linen, anything that's uh, woven cloth, like anything that that needs to be made, they derive it from the earth, and so yeah. they're lacking a lot of that. Yeah, how yeah. are you going to make clothes back yeah. in that day? You yeah. know, they might have still been making paper from... Oh, the yeah, the papyrus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And then, you know, like Carol mentioned about having to clean, you know, who knows how the droppings affected Mm. things and people they didn't have a water hose to go out with and yeah. spray yeah, things down, true. you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't have the elephant to call over and say, hey, yeah. he, didn't yeah. to, he didn't seem to be bothering the camel though that was all no. right. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I guess they're not they don't like meat, right? But I was gonna go there next though. I'm sure they had they have to affect some part of the animal kingdom, yeah. sort of say. They have to affect some animal somehow. I mean just that noise all the time, it, you know, affects us. But I mean, you know, and then I, I keep going back to Bugs Life, the movie from Disney. <laughs> you know, they all had their different, you know, <laughs> positions. Yeah. So it's, I would be curious to, you know, they, they definitely must have so affected. You are itching. Oh, yeah, 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 right, right, right. That's like so right. subconscious. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, 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 right. I now what, if, what if it were modern day? Where <laughs> would we see the effects of this? Do you think? Our cars being uh, covered. Yeah, and the oh, economy. Like yeah, the economy. Say more mm -hmm. about the economy. What what happened? Um, the resources would be dried up. It would hurt the farmland, mm -hmm. which would affect our food. No, for bread would, would be eight bucks. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, like that. The inflation of prices. Right. So it's just domino effect. Grass fed yeah. beef would be forty two dollars a pound. And then you're good. Yeah, you know what? Cattle would be starving. So right. Yeah, yeah. 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 it would yeah. devastate yeah. the economy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Grocery stores. Mm -hmm. sure. Would milk you have prices. anything? Yeah. And the cows would have milk, no. uh, grass to eat. To let's not forget the milk. wine. Right. right. Oh, yeah. Well, right. we right. mentioned the grain right. and the wine, and why is that yeah. significant <laughs> to the Israelites? <laughs> why are those two things significant to the Israelites? He mentions it in the in the um, description there. Oh, for the, the sacrifices. Oh. Yeah, the, yeah, the offerings. The offerings. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Can't even make yeah. the offerings. Right. Wow. So when they go to worship God. They, that part is absent as well. Right. So imagine for us, if you don't have wheat 
and you don't have grapes. Right. What don't we have? Communion. Yeah. We don't have communion. communion. Yeah. And the barley you, you showed up with pictures of yeah. last week, now you're hurting the ale because they're making ale because <laughs> they didn't want to drink the water. Well, did you notice <laughs> who gets <laughs> mentioned here? Uh, no, I, Not I the average oh, everyday people. The drunkards. Yeah, yeah. 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 They'll all sober up. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> Instant AA. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's gonna affect everybody. It's gonna have to, and you know uh, whether you're a, a vegan or a beef eater, it's not gonna matter because no. you're gonna be affected sure. either way when the plants right. go down, right? Sure. Plus, I would imagine the folks who are um, the the poverty, those individuals who have the least, yeah. would certainly, you know, all the wealthier folks sure. would take everything. So of course, the starvation with folks that are. You know, yeah. lesser means, you know. Yeah, and, and the know, farmers immediately. Farmers, yeah. yeah, right. Immediately. And everybody down that food chain, yeah. sure, eventually mm -hmm. feels it. And they mentioned, you know, <coughs> specifically the grapevines, as we just mm -hmm. said, but the figs. You know, we know the yeah. first, uh, 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 what do you call them, fruit cakes and all. Like so we hear figs, and we're like, okay, so they don't have figs, but they were sweeteners, and, and who yeah. knows what else they used them for that that it was. We don't realize how large it was, the absence of these items, but yeah. you know, they were used for more than just us buying a little round ring of figs and yeah. bunch of them. Dried figs. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's true. These yeah. are staples in their, yes. in their life. Mm -hmm. um, but it wouldn't matter what society you were in. Something like that would be utterly devastating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Utterly devastating. And sooner or later, <laughs> once they, they expired, I mean, that's a whole lot of cleanup. For something they mentioned eating them, but I mean, once once they died, wherever they, however they finished up, or in the water system and all, I mean, I'm sure it really affected. You know. Remember, I don't know if you saw the Ten Commandments. I think they show them, you know, the Hollywood version yes. back then, uh, where yeah. they have all the mm -hmm. the bugs there and they're sweeping them out of the way, yeah. <laughs> out yeah. of the palace yeah. and all that. Sure. Is there any mention about the length of time this plague lasted? No, but from what the video said, it wouldn't last too long. The, I mean, they, they do their job and they're gone, but right, right. what they do is so, is just devastating. everything. Thank goodness it doesn't last any longer. And then they said up yeah. to 40 miles. 40, you know, 40 miles. miles. Yeah, and billions sounds, of them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's here to Mount Holly and some. There you go. You know I mean? that, yeah. There you go. Good yeah. distance. So, wow. <laughs> craziness. So that first section, yeah, you get sure. the command, and you get the this part of the story that makes this so uh, such a pressing issue of their day. So, good, good stuff. So, <coughs> how are the people to respond? What is going to be Joel's message to the people? What should they do? Repent and turn to the Lord. So always repent. Mm -hmm. Repent means turn, turn around, right? Turn around. Change your mind, turn around. Either way. Um, and it's a particular way that Joel says to do it. What are the specifics of this repentance? What is it going to look like? It has pieces to it, has components to it. Well, what I read is that uh, it's in phases. Um, he's asking them to do certain things uh, one after the other. Okay, so when you get to verse 13, what are some of the things that are mentioned there? <clears throat> Gird yourself and lament, ye priests, how ye ministers of the altar, come lie all night in sackcloth, ye ministers of my God. For the meat offering and the drink offering is withholden from the house of your God. So, so the first people that yeah. are to respond are whom? Oh, the uh, high priests. priests the the uh, priests yeah. and the ministers. ministers. Yeah, the people in the, that, it, it, that run the religious part of it. Mm -hmm. They're the first ones, and they are to put on sackcloth. Mm -hmm. What is that? It's a, like a, a garb that people wear that are in mourning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and it's meant to be a sign of humility as well uh, and mourning um, because when you are repenting, you're, you're trying to say to God, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. We've done wrong. So yes, and that Forgive first, me you're right. Calling on His mercy. Yep. And then once the the ministers and the priests start, what are they to do? Verse fourteen. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Bring the leaders mm -hmm. and all the people of the land into the temple of the Lord your God, and cry out to Him there. Yes. So envision that. You have the church leadership 
calling the rest of the population to the house, to the temple, house of God, and <clears throat> they are calling for a solemn assembly. So this means it's going to be a corporate event. All right, everybody's in on this because that's how widespread this is and this is how dramatic this is for everybody. So um, there's an assembling and there's uh, fasting and there's obviously praying. Praying out uh, with, a, with intention. Um, so that is the response that the prophet is telling the people to take on because of the significance of this tragic event. I was trying to think have you ever experienced anything like that? To that extent? No. No? Sounds like you know that we have, but we haven't. Well, I don't think it was formal. I think right. it was very informal, but 20 years ago in September. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm I agree. Sorry, yeah. What yeah. happened a then? A lot of people, well, not oh. 11, a yeah. lot of people yeah. came together, and a lot of support, a yeah. lot of outreach, a lot of symbolism, flying the American flag, just yeah. a lot of solidarity. Yeah, a lot of people came to the churches yeah. and wanted to pray, and you didn't even have to ask them to. It was like right. people were coming yeah. because it was a, a national emergency. It had that same feel, and people were looking to God and saying, you know, help, essentially. Sure. We, need, we need to know you're here. So that's the only similar situation I can think of recently, yeah, mm -hmm. you know? Uh -huh. I, would, I would argue that the... Um, like the situation we're going through with uh, COVID is mm -hmm. similar to almost like a plague, how it's hitting a lot of industries. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. look at the airlines for a long period of time. They were oh. devastated, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. a lot of parts of the economy were affected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're absolutely uh, right, yeah. too. So. Yeah. They, they opened up Canada yeah. because they mm -hmm. were missing out so much on, on the tourism, mm -hmm. on, the, on the money, and I'm sure other industries as well. Mm -hmm. but. But it's still going on. It's mm -hmm. still uh, mm -hmm. you know, something you said just made me think about, you know, because I thought maybe you were going there first, but mm -hmm. you know, definitely 9 11 now it kind of made everybody just stop and, mm -hmm. and, and really kind of reconcile where you were and the, and, mm -hmm. and, and the unknown of, of tomorrow and, mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. Even, even the next day. I mean, just. Yeah. Uh, financial disaster? Sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> whether it was the the recession, what back in two thousand eight or so, mm -hmm. when we saw the stock market just crash, mm -hmm. yeah. or mm -hmm. the the Great Depression, mm -hmm. that right. I mean, uh, people doing all sorts of craziness because mm -hmm. they're just devastated, and then World War Two. Mm -hmm. You know, when the world is at war, there had to be a reaction. Yeah. I mean, right. I, I didn't live through that. Remember the, the, the dust bowls? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The Okies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Grapes of wrath. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's probably been other situations, but mm -hmm. maybe you know each generation has one they can think about mm -hmm. uh, and and recognize for that. So, so that's the response that is called for to repent and to do it in a corporate fashion for prayer and fasting um, and basically cry out to God. Um, yep. I mean, you look at the end of chapter 1. To you, O Lord, I cry, this is Joel, for fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness, because what happens when everything is dry? Yeah. You're looking at really tinder. Yeah, mm -hmm. fires. Yeah. Fires. Yep. Yeah, and flames have burned all the trees of the field, so on top of the locusts, now you just, everything's burned. Even the wild animals cry to you because the water courses are dried up and fire has devoured the pastures of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. It just goes on and on. It just wreaks havoc on everybody. So now um, this call for the assembly, the assembly of, of the people has come. And there gets there, there's this mention uh, in, in chapter 2. It says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. The day of the Lord. What is that? You ever hear that before? The day of the Lord? I've heard it, but I never really thought about it. The way you the way you 
say it there, it makes you think about when he when he comes back again. Yeah. That yeah. that may be for us as Christians, we think about that yeah. the day of the return of, of Jesus in yeah. particular. Yeah. But of course, this is long before Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. So what would this be? The day of the Lord. Hmm. Any Sunday? ideas? What's that? Sunday. Kind of Sunday? Yes. Mm, well, I think it's a little bit bigger than that. When Jesus is born? No, no. Mm -mm. Well, I see where you're going with that. The yeah. day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Um, the day of the Lord. Let's look at a few things. We'll see if we can do a little homework on this. Mm -hmm. If we look at Amos, and he's the next guy over, so just flip over to the next one. Okay. Amos 5, 18 through 20. Let's see. If somebody would read those verses for us, please. I'll read that. It's woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for the day of the Lord? The day will be darkness, not light. It will be as though a man fled from a lion only to meet a bear, as though he entered his house and rested his hand on the wall only to have a snake bite him. Will not the day of the Lord be darkness, not light, pitch dark? without a ray of brightness. Amos is a little more flowerful with his language, isn't he? <laughs> yes. I mean, you get it when you read him. What kind of day is the day of the Lord like? Doesn't sound like a good one. <laughs> no, it's it's very very right? good yeah, one. I might have missed something. It seems but like Revelation. <laughs> right? What did you say? Like Revelations. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like that. Sounds like some of Alex's nightmares. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Start, run running from a lion and yeah, 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 yeah. running into a bear. I mean, yeah. Yeah. wow. The snake as well. People don't like snakes. Um, yeah, not good. And the light darkness, you know, there's no light around. It's a dark day. You'll see that throughout the scriptures. The day of the Lord, the moon turns red and um, the clouds are rolling up like a scroll. It's, it's very, of course, last night if you saw the sky. Yes. Oh, yeah. You know, you would think, oof. Yeah. You know, it's something mm -hmm. you don't see too often. A lightning and everything like that, that would have been a nice description of a day of the Lord there. So, so it wasn't dark when all that happened? I was uh, what, uh, last, night? last night? Uh, it, was it was getting there. I mean, when, when I left yeah, here, okay. the, I could see the dark mm -hmm. cloud, but the rest of the sky was already getting dark. Yeah, it was getting dark. I mm -hmm. did notice some of those where you see that really in the dark cloud, like another cloud. Yeah, it was yeah. really, it, yeah. it really did. It was really rolling. Yes. Yeah. Feel like, yeah. Ooh, something's coming. So you get some, some previews there. I don't know. So that's um, the day of the Lord? The day of the Lord, according to Amos, the way he describes it. And okay. then if you go to Zephaniah, that's a couple more down the road there. It's uh, right after Habakkuk, but before Haggai, if that helps. And we're going to be in Habakkuk next week. So. And this is the end of the Old Testament? Uh, Malachi is. Malachi. Yeah. But Zephaniah chapter 1, if somebody would read verse 7, verse 7. Zephaniah. Uh, Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Mm -hmm. Zephaniah. Verse 7. Yeah. Chapter 1, verse 7. Mm -hmm. it's two books. Stand in okay. silence in the presence of the sovereign Lord, for the awesome day of the Lord's judgment is near. The Lord has prepared his people for a great slaughter and has chosen their executioners. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh mm -hmm. wow, I don't know what version you have, but that's Whoa, strong. That's that yeah, I, I, had to, I had to go back and make sure. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yes. That's what I read. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So that one, a little different there. People for a great slaughter yeah. and has chosen their executioners. Yeah. So before you even get to that, the very beginning is different. Because mm -hmm. in Joel, the priests and the ministers <coughs> are supposed to be what? <coughs> Come together first. Yeah, oh, and, and are they quiet? They <coughs> um, mourning, they're almost mourning, right? Yeah, they're loud. Yeah. They cry out. out. Yeah, yeah cry out. a wail. Right. Uh, so there's a lot of crying out, but this one says, <coughs> be silent. Mm. Be silent before God. <coughs> a different version of the day of the Lord. And and then say the next part that you had, because yours was better than mine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just Carol. flipped away so I wouldn't see. Do you want a water bottle? I have a water bottle no, here. I, 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 I went Jonah. Yeah. I'll be right there. <coughs> my cough drop. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Name, name. 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 Name.
No, it's right after Habakkuk. Right back, 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 back. Wait, I'm sorry. What, um, We're still in that verse. That's oh, okay. Ver what does it say after that? There's yeah, that Be Wait, silent. Right. How did I miss that? Be silent before the sovereign Lord. Uh -huh. The day of the Lord is near. Mine is probably not as big as his. <laughs> the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated those he has invited. On the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the princes and the king's sons and all those clad in foreign clothes. Okay. So wow. there's this sense of a sacrifice <coughs> that's going to be made, which is different. Cause, but it also mentions judgment, I think, in years too, yeah. Will. So you've there. got the, the dual there because you've got judgment, which is usually associated with the day of the Lord, but you also have right. sacrifice. Hmm. Mm. Now, when you think of judgment and sacrifice, who do you usually think of as a Christian? Jesus. Jesus, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that could be a reference to the day of the Lord, the day of Jesus, particularly yeah. his death. And also, yeah, forgive me for not knowing, but who took his son? And right at the last minute, they sacrificed. Uh, they, they, uh, he didn't have to sacrifice his son. Oh, Abraham. Abraham. That's yeah. way beyond yeah. this. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's seven. So that's a description. But then you also go to verse 14 in chapter 1 in Zephaniah. And what does that say? The great day of the Lord is near. It is near in the case of safety. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man, shall cry. There and keep going because this is <coughs> a day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. You can keep going. Okay. Okay. A day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced mm -hmm. cities and against the high towers, and I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all, speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. So there's an even more descriptive uh, passage about the day of the Lord. Yeah. So it's not a good day. No. Not a good day. Mm -hmm. well, you definitely don't want to be dressed in the other team's uniform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, that's that, interesting. That's interesting that you say because when I was reading this, I do have some notes and I was talking about you know, the moon shall be red. And they said it's symbolic of blood. So whether it was a punishment... Um, and whether I was wondering, is that a punishment of those non-believers, or is it a punishment of the believers because of their sin? Um, there, I also found a reference to the red and the blood was a war. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. we just read in Zephaniah, the seventh verse, and you read it as a sacrifice. You know, oh, the day of the Lord. That kind of makes sense. Okay, let's interpret it as the day that Jesus was crucified. When you jump up to 14, that seems something different altogether. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we're going to touch on that, so hold that thought, because when we get further on into Joel, maybe it'll answer some of that, because that's, that's in the mix here. So hold on to that one, good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in Joel, you see a lot of the gloom and doom, but there's also a little bit of hope, mm -hmm. right? If you look at, let's, let's look back at Joel, verse 15, chapter 1. What does verse 15 say? Alas for that day, for the day of the Lord is near, it will come like destruction from the Almighty. Okay, so that's not a good one, right? Destruction is coming. How about 2, verse 1? Sound the alarm in Jerusalem. Raise the battle cry on my holy mountain. Let everyone tremble in fear because the day of the Lord is upon us. Okay. Again, doom and gloom. Mm -hmm. What about verse 11 in chapter 2? The Lord thunders at the head of his army and forces are beyond number and mighty are those who obey his command. The day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. Who can endure it? Okay. So this day of the Lord, anytime we look at it, it's not good. Now, 
But let's look at verse 13, well, verse 12 and 13. And this is one of the famous passages from Joel. Okay, so let's look at this. Who wants to read 12? 12, 12, 12 and 13. Yeah. 12 and 13, 10 to 2? Yes. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your heart, and your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repentant, and of the evil. Yes. So, mm -hmm. in the midst of this approach of doom and gloom, what is the instruction that's given by Joel? Return to the Lord. Don't, yeah, the repentance. Don't tear your clothing in yeah. grief. Or, well, excuse me, and then and then at the end there, where it said, uh, you know, in this version, he is eager to relent and not punish. Mm. You know, after all of you know <laughs> some of what you've yeah. been through, I mean, that is that is you know relief that. Or, or, or some or comforting, you know, to know that there's still hope for some, if not all. I guess, I guess all. There's got to be hope, otherwise right. you wouldn't repent, right? right? Right. Because when you repent, what are you hoping for? Forgiveness. Yes. Forgiveness. Yes. yes. You're mercy. looking to God's mercy, mm -hmm. right? You, because it always says God is merciful; His right. steadfast mm -hmm. love endures forever. So, here are these people; they're devastated by this tragedy, and prophet says repent well the only string you've got is hopefully God's gonna change this mm -hmm. and we don't know how but he's, mm -hmm. he's got to find a way because we're at wit's end right. oh, it and reminds so, me of one of your Sunday stories about the man you know they were keeping points on what have you done that get you into heaven and said well it's gonna be like God's grace that I get in there bing yeah yeah always shows up yeah. time and again right but yeah, this and that whole idea of don't just rend your garments. What was it when you ripped your garment? No, no. What was that? Mourning. Yeah, yeah. mourning, yeah. Yeah. sorrowful. Yeah. Um, okay. Joel is very quick to say, don't just go through the motions. Rend your heart. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of your heart. You've got to get in there and deal with whatever's going on there with God. Mm -hmm. And that's where he says, that's where your true repentance is found. That's and notice verse 14. No guarantee. Yeah. It says, who knows whether he will not turn yeah. and relent and leave Perhaps. a blessing behind him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're doing it hoping, believing, mm -hmm. but God is still free to choose as he wants here. Right. Now, Pastor, mm -hmm. we, um, God brought, the, brought forth the plague because of sin. So right. He, Joel is saying, look, we don't know. He's, he's a merciful God, but he may or may not, uh, you know, forgive you in a sense or provide right. mercy to you. We don't, yeah. it don't depend on how, how, um, whatever God yeah, chooses. Exactly. Yeah. Kinda, how I much you lament. And, and, um, you know, because you would think the world's coming to an end. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, when these things happen, there's such, the, the grandeur of it all is is people think this could be the end. This could be it. Like 9-11. Like 9-11. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I remember, you know, I'm watching TV. I don't know if you guys where you were, but I'm re I was watching TV that morning, and I'm like, well, the plane already hit the tower. Right. Then the other plane came and hit the tower, which I happened to see on the yes. TV, and I'm thinking, yes. is this a movie? What's going right. on? Right. And then when it hit, you knew something went in down in Pennsylvania. Because right. they weren't saying too much, but they right. showed something, right. and then the Pentagon, and I right. thought, oh my, like the yeah. feeling of, like, are we at war? Yeah. I never had that feeling before. Yeah. I've right. never been through that. Right. Oh, yeah. So that right. whole feeling there. Imagine feeling that mm -hmm. when they're they're in the locust plague, and and everything's gone. Mm -hmm. The first moment you realize, sure. what are we going to eat? Mm -hmm. You know, how right. many, how are my animals going to make it? How is right. my family going to make it? Right. Mm -hmm. That feeling of dread, that's uh, enough to make you want to call the assembly and, and pray and fast mm -hmm. and turn to God. It um, was for the Ninevites, briefly, and Jonah. <laughs> well, the Ninevites, because <laughs> what did the king say to the Ninevites when Jonah proclaimed the message? To repent. He called for yeah. repentance, yeah. and the well, message was repent, yeah. and they fasted. Yeah. Pray and fast. Yeah. Yep, yep. 
so yeah, there is this, um, something's gone wrong, and uh, like somebody said, which I think I printed out later on in your uh, stuff, when you don't know where to turn, turn to the Lord. I love that. I think that's yeah. like a subtitle for Joel. When you don't know where to turn, turn to the Lord. A lot of people are stuck. You know, you get into that scenario where you're hemmed in on every side, everything's going wrong, and where do you look? Look to God. It also reminds us of, uh, you know, uh, I, I hear of different people saying that they fast. I know I read somewhere that, you know, uh, you know, even even to, to make yourself look not as though you're like hungry, yes. you know, to put oil in your face mm -hmm. and, and you know, don't 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 complain about it was what I heard. Yes. You know, to celebrate it. But yeah. uh, it, it, it it plants seeds of the importance of fasting. To yeah, and this would not be a regular fast. This okay. would not be a routine fast like, you know, the Jewish people would have certain times of the year where they would have call for a fast. Okay. This is emergency. Okay. This is sound the, like it says, sound the alarm. This is for survival. This is lack of food. This is like you know, there's something right. going on here that's mm -hmm. devastating. Wow. Yeah. All right. The sound the alarm. Ring the church bells. This is something big. Yep. Yeah, blow the ram's horn. The, yeah. the alarms. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's all kinds of... I like the, the alarm. I like that because yeah. that really catches it. When alarm goes off, you know something's wrong. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. So, you've had the tragedy. You've had the people responding to what Joel says, which yes. is God's call to repent. What does God do? That's always the key. How's mm -hmm. God going to handle this? Okay? So that starts in uh, 2.18 and then goes to the end of the book. Um, and it's very interesting. When you get to 2.18, 18 and 19, who wants to read those? Then the Lord will be jealous for his land and take pity on his people. The Lord will reply to them, I am sending you grain, new wine, and oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. Good. So why does God act? Maybe, uh, well, first of all, for their respect and the repentance and the, uh, 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 what we just talked about, the fasting and, mm -hmm. and, and, and them knowing where to turn. Okay. Possibly. And notice it's, it's, he has pity on his people. Yes. And... Uh, he has become jealous for his land. He has pity on them. He, he sees what they're going through. They're suffering. And God responds to that. Gabriel, Oh, yes, because he's merciful. Because God... Yeah. His, his mercy gets triggered there, mm -hmm. you know. And so he sees that and he says, okay, it's, that's it. They're, you know, and they've repented. Mm -hmm. So they've responded the way they should. And so he's now going to respond to them. And notice it says, I'm sending you. Yes. Does everybody say sending? Wow. Yes. We were yes. looking at that sending. in first class. Yep. Everybody says sending? sending. Yes. So now, can they have, could he have grown it in a short amount of time? Sure. sure. He could have. Yeah. Anything yeah. is possible. But right. most likely he's sending it from another part of the somewhere else somewhere yeah. Land. Right. yeah that's probably what's happening but however when it arrives they don't have to ask where it came from <laughs> right right they know right. where, they it, know came where right. it came from right. yes yes but right. he's gonna he's gonna take care of them he's gonna get it there because you know even that locust thing of 40 miles it doesn't mean it's happening all over right mm -hmm. so there right. are areas that still are fertile and have fruit and but wind rain and all that up right because they yes. say they follow the wind they follow the right. wind yeah right. so upwind should be safe <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah you know, this reminds me of uh, the flood. You know, we have the rainbow, mm -hmm. which we mm -hmm. still have the rainbow as a sign of, you know, it will never happen again. Yeah. And for God to say something will never happen again, wow, what a sealed promise. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know. I will no more make you a mockery among the nations. What does that mean? What was going on probably after this happened? They were like, wow, what did you guys do to deserve those locusts? <laughs> you know, what's going on well, up there? Well, that's not a mock. I think oh, more no. mocking. Mocking. If you're going to mock them. Right. What would you say to them after this happened? You're in trouble. I'm yeah. pointing uh, yeah. yeah, to Ariana. That's a little kind. I'm pointing to Ariana. Like, hey, I'm the end and the end or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, you, know, you guys like, got the locusts. Yeah, you guys are pure God over yeah. there. Look at yeah. that didn't yeah. help you. Yeah. Look at right. you. You're then devastated. Then I'm sorry. They might even be saying, you know, what did you guys do to your God that he's uh, 
that uh, oh yeah they probably could have questioned yeah. it I'm yeah. sure they themselves yeah. may have wondered like, what happened yeah. yeah what do we do but if the yeah. nations are mocking you it's not going to be a good no. no a good no. thing and God doesn't like that yeah. he doesn't like when his people get mocked right mm -hmm. and that comes up a number of times in the Bible but so God says uh -uh. testimony seeing after all of that mm -hmm. the new wine and the food come is also mm -hmm. a whole whole lesson yeah. Oh, in, yeah. In, in belief that you know they messed up, but they were still taken care of. Yeah, yeah. that's a constant yeah, that's, theme with oof. God. Mm -hmm. Constant. Yeah. Yes. And notice what he does with the. Uh, what do you think he does with those grasshoppers? You have to read verse twenty. What does that say? What does that say, Gabby? Verse twenty in uh, chapter two. Uh huh. It says, "A northerner, I will remove far from you." driving them out into a dry and desolate land, their vanguard to the eastern sea, their rear guard to the western sea, and their stretch, stench will rise, their stink will ascend. What great deals the Lord has done. So that's how he's going to handle the grasshoppers. That's neat. This, this version says the Dead Sea. Uh-huh. Gabrielle's Dead Sea. Went, yeah. Uh, those, uh -huh. in, those in front will be driven into the Dead Sea, and those mm -hmm. at the rear into the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the one oh, closest gotcha. to you. So you're mm -hmm. right. Dead Sea here is, is east, okay. Mediterranean is west. Uh -huh. Wow, to see it on a map, to read it in the, in the, in the Bible, and yeah. Yeah. so now yeah, he's feeding it. the fish. <laughs> yeah. Basically, right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yes, yeah. Get them out of the way. They're going right, right into the water, right. and, um, and they're going to stink. Oh, yeah. Oof. Stink it up. Oof, I, yeah, you don't yeah, want that. Yeah. So just anyway. fly smell. Oh. If, you, if you collect them, and you know, you know, we someone bumped the catcher, and mm. horrible. Oh, so yeah. I can't imagine Nasty. locusts would be Billions. times. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, oh yeah. It, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, and that's another side effect of this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, we you have cattle dying one. in the field. That's not going to smell too good. No. no. And there might be people dying too. The weakest mm -hmm. yeah. suffered the first. It's just the locusts. So it was a gift that they went into the oceans yeah. to help. Yeah, God always has a beautiful yeah. way of, of ending pain yeah. and suffering, if you mm -hmm. notice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the detail that we get in the Bible is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It sure is. But then, if that isn't good enough, look at verses 21 and 22 and 23. Here, God is going to restore. Now, he's brought the food in. Right. All right, so your immediate need is taken care of. But look at what happens here. Who is God talking to in verse 21? Us. I mean, or to them. No, no. no what so is the land. The oh. land. He speak, oh. And mine specifically says soil. Yeah, mine says oh land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 21? Yeah. Mine says don't be afraid, my people. Hmm. Be oh. glad now and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. And when I hear "Don't be afraid," I think there's an angel that, that's there. Yeah, do not up. fear. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, I don't know why yours says people, but it, it does say right. soil. It's the uh, two twenty one, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah two twenty one. Yeah. Because you're going to see the progression. So in okay. verse twenty one, God's talking to the soil. In verse twenty two, who is He talking to? The to wild not be animals. Afraid. Yeah. The animals. Be afraid, you animals. So. It's almost like the earth was scared after this because I guess so. there's a little bit of fear there. Yeah. Uh, or it's a very poetic thing to say, <laughs> you know, for the people to understand God is caring for the soil, God's caring for the animals. Sure. And then third, the last one on the list, mm -hmm. 23. Yeah, the people. Mm -hmm. The people, O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice. All of them, he's saying, don't fear, be glad and rejoice because the spiritual thing that they would be missing after all this devastation would be what? what we talked about. They wouldn't uh, be able uh, to be glad and rejoice, so what's missing? When you can't rejoice, what are you missing? Joy. Joy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You're not you're not happy when there's a, no, no. a famine. You're not happy when there's this devastation. And God is saying, no, no, no. You're going to rejoice. I want you to rejoice. I'm, uh, trust me. But it's, isn't that beautiful? He talks to the land, and then the sure. animals, and then the people. Yeah, in chapter 1, when he introduces the, the locusts, the very last uh, verse says, Surely the joy of mankind is withered away. away. Yes, yes. Yep. I like in 24 how it says, The threshing floors will again be piled high with grain, and the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. 
Yeah, yeah, and it's all gonna like, you know, be more. And it even like, says uh, overflow. Yes, and we, there will, will be we, more. Yeah, in verse twenty-five. Things, right, overflow. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust have, has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. So it's going to be compounded right. when he returns the food to them and, and all that they were missing. It's always amazing when that. Like I, I, I hope to never be tested like Job. No. You know, and like so, you you know you, you he you, he survived all that, and, and and of course he got all, but yeah, I know it was worth it. Yeah. But you know, you know. Yeah. How do you but, replace but, the kids? But wow, yeah. just yeah. wow. That, yeah. For some reason that, mm -hmm. but thank goodness that you are blessed with, yeah. you know, uh, because the, after those locusts went through, without God's help, that that land could look like could look like the Badlands or whatever mm -hmm. state that. You yeah. know, I mean, it, it could be that way forever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dust you know, barren. Yeah. Yep. <coughs> now the other famous verse, set of verses in Joel, come in verses twenty eight and twenty nine of chapter two. Somebody want to read those verses? See if they sound familiar. So not only is God restoring what happened, but there's also this futuristic thing that God is going to take care of. Mm -hmm. And what is he going to send as, in addition to the material goods, but... Dreams and visions? Well, I, what he's going to send is going to cause the dreams and visions. Okay. He's the going Holy to pour Spirit. out the Holy Spirit. his Spirit, mm -hmm. his wow. Holy Spirit, as we know it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Where, where does that come up? Where have we? I, we've heard that before, have you not? In Acts. In Acts, very good. Where in Acts? Do you have any idea? Oh, well, I'm gonna guess. It's one eight. <laughs> <laughs> well, one eight actually, I wasn't even okay. really accurate with that, but one eight refers to it. But look at chapter two of the book of Acts. Chapter two of the book of Acts is about what? Pentecost. Pentecost. Uh, what happened to yeah. Pentecost? The Holy Spirit was given to the apostles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, because now they're given power mm -hmm. to spread the gospel. Mm -hmm. So this, and, and Peter, once he receives the Holy Spirit in that manner, he begins to preach. And if you look at chapter 2, verses 17 and 18 and 19 and 20 and 21, all of that is part of what he preaches. And he cites Joel, mm -hmm. which means that Joel's prophecy is now fulfilled. The Holy Spirit now can come upon the people. Why? Because at Pentecost, Jesus has ascended, and now God is sending the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So you have the fulfillment of Joel. <coughs> And it says the same thing. In the last days it will be God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons, your daughters shall prophesy. Your men shall see visions. Old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit. They shall prophesy. And notice verse 19. And this is going to get to what you were talking about, Melissa. And I will show portents or signs in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Mm. Oh, that comes up again. Mm. And then it says, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm. So the day of the Lord gets mentioned here again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's coming out of Joel. Joel was talking about that. So Peter knew to reference Joel. Pentecost and what Joel told them 430 years before give or take has now been fulfilled at Pentecost you know you, you mentioned ascension and, and um, I shared with you the other morning the thing I read about uh, I never thought about it this way but 
it was an additional blessing that that God let the ascension be witnessed. Mm. You know, yeah. it could have, it could have just happened, and, and and we would be okay with it. But mm. but you know, he, you know, they were there and they saw him, and, and it's going to make me now go back and read it. But you know, they saw the what the heavens open up and and, and him go up. Goes behind the cloud. Mm -hmm. Right. So if, yeah. if everything else they had seen and wasn't. The Oh, wait a minute. What about the angels? The, the angels they say the way you saw him go up is the way you're going to see him come back. Down. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, um, between Jesus' resurrection and Pentecost is, is the ascension. But yeah, you have, um, God says, I'm going to restore you, um, and I'm going to bring joy back, mm -hmm. and I'm going to save you from this calamity, um, and I'm going to send my Holy Spirit. But that's not all going to happen at the same time. So you have Joel giving confidence to the people in their day and time after the devastation. God's going to do this. But now he's starting to look ahead too. So God is laying out the framework for the ultimate day of the Lord. And we get a description of that in the third chapter of Joel. And in uh, verse 9, uh, let me see, where is it? I'm sorry. Verse, uh, verse 1, For then in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people and my heritage Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations. So Jehoshaphat literally means valley of judgment. So God says, I'm going to gather you, I'm going to restore your fortunes, but I'm going to gather the nations. And what is he going to gather them for? Judgment. 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 And we know that from the book of Revelation. There's a set time for that. So Joel is looking way down now. Mm. He's, he's looking way down the road. Um, so he's, he's tending to the people of his day, but he's also... And how would that connect to the command that he gave in the beginning? What was that command? To tell your children so they know, so they are ready. Yeah. Tell them about this because this is perhaps a sign of what's going to be coming maybe down in their generation. Mm -hmm. So they, at least they can continue to keep the faith and, yeah. and don't sin. Maybe they can, they can yeah. prevent this from happening again. Thanks. Exactly. Yeah. Lest there be more locusts. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Or, right. if I may say even more concerning or scarier, he said he's not going to do the locusts right. again. You know, what, whatever it may be, right? Well, he didn't say locusts he wouldn't send again. What did um, he say he wouldn't do again? He or he promised? Try for, um, uh, oh, oh, the mockery. Yes. yes. Right, he, he wouldn't do want the, them to be mocked. Right, again. he wouldn't let the other mm -hmm. nations mm -hmm. with the mockery, yes. right. So he didn't say, this isn't like the flood, where it's dumb Right, flood. that's a, yeah. Right, so yeah. locusts, right? Locusts could come back right. around. They say cicada. The Bible says <laughs> yeah. locusts right. or screw Well, does cicada or eat the, the vegetation like the locusts? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they do. Abuses. They talk about They look like the same thing, yeah. in my yeah. opinion, yeah. when you see yeah. them. They're yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, they are, fortunately, they're not as big as the locusts. Some of those yeah, no, they, like yeah. They look like, like birds. Yeah. Yeah. birds. Yeah. Yeah. We used to play with grasshoppers when we were kids. I'm sure. <laughs> we used to do the lightning bus. Take them all. Take them oh, all. Oh, yes. Out and then and it's funny, we, funny we talked about feeding fish and they eat up in the, in, the, in the water some people fish with uh, grasshoppers oh yeah yeah, yeah. So put I, them I, on the hook yeah so, sure so it really did feed the fish yeah oh yeah yeah huh. all goes back in <laughs> can i ask one other question yeah yeah um, now the context of joel saying this is he actually witnessing this or is he He's been given He's been, the word, like, like a, a so sense. whether he saw it, mm -hmm. but you know, the prophet always has to, I hate to say spit sight. back out, but you got to give out what God gave you. Right. Right. That's, right. if you don't, there's a problem. Okay. And there's a reason why you're given that message at that time. Mm -hmm. So he had a message for the people then and there in that, at that, that tragedy, <coughs> but there's also more to come. Okay. And that mm -hmm. still goes back to that, tell your children, tell your children, tell your children. 
make sure the generations that are coming know mm -hmm. about this. And, and all of these smaller <coughs> books, these powerful smaller books, mm -hmm. they're prophets. Yeah, well yeah. this section of the Old Testament is all prophets. Prophets. Yeah. Yeah. And, and them being spoken to, Ariana, take it easy. By them being spoken to makes them a prophet. And, and uh, God also, calls them. Notice right. the, the very beginning of Joel, the word of the Lord that came to Joel. That's usually how the prof prophetic books begin, gotcha. or at least when they're ready to give their prophecy. Gotcha. The word of the Lord came to. Because I'm just thinking, you know, many people, uh, what, Daniel had dreams, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, you know, but they wouldn't be prophets. I mean, not, and, and, and you know, we don't have to, you know, there's always someone that's Well, Daniel classes, is a different kind of literature. Okay. Uh, we just studied him. What kind of literature was Daniel? Uh, I only caught oh, three of them at home. No. no. It's the other word for revelation. Prophetic? No, this is prophetic, but it's apocalyptic. Apocalyptic. Oh. End of times. You have narrative in the beginning, but when you get to the end of Daniel, like well, a beast with like horns, and then okay. another one gets a horn cut off, and then there's right. another horn coming out, wow. ten horns coming. Like yeah. what is this? Uh -huh. Trying to figure that one out. Yeah. Apocalyptic literature is very difficult. Revelation is another example of that. It's hard, but yeah, prophetic. The thing about prophetic literature is, and why a lot of people get bogged down when they read the prophets, is because you need this, and you need the history, mm -hmm. and you need the context. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's it's a message. You get the basic message, but you're like, well, why is he saying that this right. way? Right. I don't understand why he's talking about that. Well, they do a lot of referencing from, uh, like, you know, incorporating yes. other generations and, and everything. And that's the other thing. There's a reason. Timeline. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a reason why you want to start at Genesis and go that right. way. Okay. It's hard to hit. When you start here and then you, they make a reference back here, you're right. like, oh, what is that? Right. Yeah. But I, but I like it. Like you had said, Pentecost, it, it kind of just foreshadows some of the things that are coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come, so. yeah. Peter mm -hmm. was given the inspiration of the Spirit to go back to Joel's mm -hmm. prophecy and yeah. say, now it's fulfilled. Yeah. And Peter wasn't alive during the time of Joel. No. So he, yeah. wow. But that, that was in his Bible. That would have been his, in his Bible. His Bible. Mm -hmm. But it was the Spirit that prompted him to, to speak to it. Yeah. And once again, I always enjoy how the different books of the Bible tie into each other. Mm -hmm. And in this case, taking it to a whole other level that Peter spoke of another person and book of, in the Bible. Oh, it's yeah. even yeah. more amazing. Yeah, the connections. Oh, yeah. Um, the other verse that you might be familiar with, I, I don't know. Uh, the Verse 14 of chapter 3, just real quick, where it says... Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Did you ever hear that one? Multitudes, multitudes I never, in no. the valley of decision. No. That's, of course, when God has gathered the nations. Right. He's got all these people, and there's going to be judgment. And he says, in the valley of decision, Jehoshaphat, that's what that means, mm -hmm. for the day of the Lord, because, for, because the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. What's the decision? Whether, whether you lived right, whether, you, whether you're going to uh, live forever, eternity. Well, and, and it, remember, day of the Lord, okay. doom and gloom, there's going to be right. judgment. judgment day, right? So what's the decision you have set before you? Whether you're going to uh, be taken to heaven or, or, or is it more repenting? Or whether he's going oh, to be yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, who's going to repent? Yeah. Okay. Because that's the only way you're going to touch on right. God's mercy. Right. Or are wow. people just going to go headstrong into it and say, not me. Right. And Take me away, and they're going to go. And then Joel was kind of like, well, we, it's really not specific. He didn't know whether or not God would, you know, accept the repentance. So he said perhaps he could. Well, no, no, no. They, they do know because then God comes back comes and back says, and says I'm going to restore you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send you the grain, and then I'm going to send you the rains mm -hmm. and all that stuff. He speaks to the soil, the, the, the animals, animals, the people, and, and all that. So, yeah, that's okay. God's response. Okay. Um, but, yeah, and then getting back to what Melissa was bringing mm -hmm. up, you know, is God talking to the people of Joel's day, or is he talking to these oh, right. nations mm -hmm. down the road? Mm -hmm. It's both. Mm -hmm. But we saw the people repent, mm -hmm. which is right. what God mm -hmm. expects. Right. 
you know. He doesn't expect us to be sinless because we're human, mm -hmm. but how we respond to our sin, that's the key. Are we repentant? Mm -hmm. You know, or just or are we just bold in sin? You think of the two uh next to uh Jesus when he was crucified. Yeah, yeah. How how yeah. the one, you know, yeah. was yeah. One uh one was saved from sin and one died in sin. Right. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, that was just another and it and it keys into if you remember Peter, that last verse of when he's preaching, he says, um uh, escaped me he says then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved remember that mm -hmm. you're in the valley of decision what do you have to do to be saved right yes that's what they were doing when they were fasting and praying they were right. calling on the name of the Lord save us help us mm -hmm. we're devastated so wow. all right so contemporary applications, I know we can't spend too much time here. We can always look at this and come back next week. But the command to tell the children, Psalm 78, you'll see it there. Deuteronomy 6, 4, the great Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord your God is one. You shall have no other gods before you. Um, tell your children when they lie down, when they rise up, talk with them. S the instruction is there. But then the Seder meal. How many of you have ever participated in a Seder meal, an actual Seder meal? And who are the ones that ask, why is this night different? Who asks that question, do you know, at the table? Uh, oh, really? The children. Okay. So there you go. Oh, right. It's a way of yeah. teaching them. They're the ones who start the Seder. Why is this night different? Okay, well, we're going to tell you. We're mm -hmm. going to teach you. We're going to explain to you. So every Seder, that message is given to the next generation, the next prompted generation. by the next generation. Can you give us a little bit more context on that? This is something I'm not familiar with. The Seder meal is um, the Jewish celebration of the Passover. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And they tell the story of the Passover. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And the now we we don't have the Seder, but what do we have? What meal do we celebrate? The Last Supper. Yeah, the Lord's Thursday. Supper. So we, you know, when I'm at the table, I'm going through the mm -hmm. same right. spiel, so to speak, but it's basically remembering the story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, what stories are we telling our children? How important to us is it? How important to us to tell them? Oh, that didn't sound too good. How important <laughs> is it to us to tell them? It's um, everything that, it, yeah. that they tell their children and yeah. their children. and right. yeah. Remember, there was a time when the only way you passed on history was verbal, right, right. oral history. Mm -hmm. You didn't have paper. Well, how much of the Bible in the very beginning was oral? Yeah. Yeah. Sit around the camp. I mean, what it's else? Amazing. You didn't have TV. You no. didn't have. Da, 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 no. You know. That's <laughs> no, it's 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 a it took a long time to write it. It's right. Really it's yeah. 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 Um, you know, you're out in the field and you're right. planting sure. whatever. I mean, what are you going to talk about? So. Yeah, let me tell you a story. Yeah. 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 And people Sunday love stories. Down. People yeah. love sure. stories. Yeah. 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 Um, and in this case, it's the tragedy our response to it, and God's response to us. So for us in today's world, what do we talk about with the next generation as the church? Um, what have we come through uh, that we're, we leaned on God and God brought us through? It could be a personal story, it could be a family story, it could be a community story, it could be a national, whatever, but where, where do we have those stories? Like Joel was telling these people, you're gonna have a story to tell. So, and of course for us, the main story is, the main story we want to tell is, Jesus. Yeah, the gospel. Yeah, the gospel. The gospel. Sure. Yes, mm -hmm. the good news. Yes. All right. Then the other thing about Joel, that whole repentance piece, when you don't know where to turn, turn to the Lord. I think one of the best questions is, when is, when is it bad enough? How bad does it have to get? Mm -hmm. and it's pretty bad for these people mm -hmm. to repent. Yeah. How bad does it have to get for people to repent? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a lot of things going on in this world. Mm -hmm. Well, How if bad I may, is it going to have to get? Excuse me, anywhere, without sharing a, a story uh, that my sister and I experienced, I think it has a lot to do with also what you've been through at times. So mm -hmm. if you've been in a bad car accident and somebody fishtails a little bit, you might be calling out to Jesus when someone else is like, yeah, is there yeah. a need for that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they've been through something tragic, and guess what? To them, it was time yeah. to call. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but you know, it, so yeah. maybe, maybe something to do with experience and and, and and you know 
just uh, you know, I just remember that you know, I was like you know, you know, it, it, it's it, you know, almost like is that necessary? And t to that person, you know, it, it takes yeah. you back to sure something more serious, and and it, and, it, and it was time, and yeah. I said you know, I, I get it. Yeah. yeah, I get it. No, yeah. that's true. I've heard people say. Uh, there's no atheists on the battlefield. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. So true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Or when you're, uh, you know, when you're uh, terminally ill or what have you, you know, you're mm -hmm. kind of at the mm -hmm. end, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you, yeah. you hope it doesn't take someone that long, but. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. But, you know, and then that whole corporate repentance, yes. when you assemble for fasting and prayer to do it corporately, you know, what would be occasions where we would do that? Yeah, something to think about. Day of the Lord. A lot of the prophets. Every talk. Sunday. Every Sunday. There yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> that's right. true. We yeah. do. We may not fast, but we do certainly right. repent and pray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the day of the Lord. Uh, you know, Joel kind of looked at the locust plague and put it in perspective as sign of the Lord, the Lord's day, the day of the Lord. Um, the, you know, there's more to this. Gave them the big picture, and said, "Be prepared." You know, uh, there's salvation to be had, but uh, God is refuge and judge. So, where do you want to fall in that? And of course, for Christians, you have Jesus in there. Of course, uh, He's Savior and He's Lord, but He's also Victor because at the end, He goes to battle against evil, yeah. mm -hmm. and so all of that is in that story there. Um, and, you know, what rule speaks the most to you right now? Is Jesus a Savior, as Lord, or as Victor? And it could change, you know, in your life, your lifetime, your experiences. That's really got to be something for Jesus to, uh, you know, I've heard that, you know, you know, he's praying for us. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know, the first time he came, he came as a babe. You know, he's, he's coming back on, on, on the, he's, he's, you know, he's... A horse. You know, oh, hello, and, yeah. you know, resting mm -hmm. and... I mean, just knowing what he went through from his birth through the crucifixion, God bless you. But, bless you. but now knowing he's going to come back in battle, and, and and him really understanding and knowing all the levels of battle, mm -hmm. you know, I, I guess this mm -hmm. this interim time you need that kind of mm -hmm. I don't know, you would call it a rest because he's always at work. But you know, just just yeah. things that make you think more when you. Yeah, to, to, it's hard sometimes to think of heavenly things because yeah. they're beyond us so much, you know. But yet, he knows the outcome. Oh yeah, that's so that that's kind of the good news. You know, I heard someone put it one time, kind of. This is very layman, but you know, uh, you know, we were talking about something with the Olympics where you don't want the news to ruin it. But like with a game, if you know the outcome, you can deal with all of the other little like you know. Like if we didn't know the outcome, like oh they right, didn't do right. this yeah. oh they fumbled the ball, <laughs> or, oh, you know. Yeah. But, but to know the outcome, is yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. um, and then the neat thing about Joel is when he conveys God's message as a prophet, you can see he gives the warning, he gives the instruction. Yeah. You know, in the midst of of what happened, what should we do? Um, and then. Always, the prophet wants to show you and, and help you see who God is in the midst of whatever situation you're in. Who is, where is God, and who is He, uh, so that you know, you know God, you know your God. Mm -hmm. You know that's the prophet's job is to get that message to you. So you know, as you're reading Joel, maybe it's the warning part that's speaking to you in your life now, or maybe it's the instruction part. You know, the whole repentance and fasting and prayer. Or maybe it's the whole part about God being my refuge or God being the judge, you know. I, I don't know. You know, Joel has so many components. Mm -hmm. For a little book, it's yeah, well, packed yeah. with it's stuff, happened. you know, mm -hmm. and, and the connections there. It makes, so. it makes me feel as though he's a part of it and, and in it, mm -hmm. more than mm -hmm. just a storyteller telling you a story or <clears throat> something that's going to happen, Well, because that's there and something that happened, but... Mm -hmm. Kind of feel as though he's. I kind of feel as though he's a part of it. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I of course definitely. he is. But yeah, yeah. yeah but I, I, mean, I don't see anybody being bored and, and kind of falling asleep when Joel's talking. No, no. no. I, no. You know, when yeah, he speaks, it's people I think are listening. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, you know, it's it's, it's compact. But uh, for the people of that day, it was something they needed. 
And, according to God and Joel, it's something that every generation needs to be aware of. Yes. So. I think that, that, that's a huge, huge message out of all the messages, yeah. is the importance of continuing the information. Yeah, because each generation is going to come into an emergency. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So if you get into a situation and you're in an emergency, whether it's as an individual or greater than that, and you say, what should I do? Well, maybe you want to look at Joel. Yeah. And you'll get instruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's some, some helpfulness there even for us today. So good stuff. I like uh, Good discussion. And next week it'll be Habakkuk. Habakkuk. That's always a fun one to say. <laughs> so we'll learn more about what was going on with him. And so read that this week. And we will conclude the Old Testament portion. So that means we're going to be halfway through our study. And then we're going to jump over. I know. I hear the praise and the whooping and the hollering <laughs> to go over into the New Testament. So, so. Any last minute comments, questions? All right. Well, let me uh, close us with prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for your word that is always so much more than we think uh, when we first read it, and you just nourish us so much, uh, not just for the here and now and what we're dealing with in the present day, uh, but also for the generations to come. And we thank you that your word still speaks uh, in this day and age. Uh, we thank you for the generations that have gone before us who took the time to teach us the stories and to share the gospel. And we thank you that you have called us in this day and time to be those people, to do the same for those who are coming after us. Uh, so may we be your instrument, Lord. May we be like Joel, faithful to your word and sharing it with whomever you call us to share. It. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Good stuff.